Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new member overview. Today, we're just going to talk a little bit about your club meetings and the experience in your club as a brand new member. Joining a Toastmasters club is a very rewarding experience, and we're glad that you've made the decision to join us. Just to make everyone aware and on the same page, I want to share with you the club mission. The club mission in Toastmasters International is we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. And this is very true. The one great thing about our organization in this regard is support. Support is a constant thing we see in our Toastmasters clubs, and it goes beyond just the club experience. A number of years ago now, I was fortunate enough to attend an international convention in Washington, D.C. At that event, we had our semifinals for the World Championship of Public Speaking, and our district champion was preparing to speak. She came up to me in great excitement and was talking about the rehearsals and how they had had an opportunity to get up on the stage, practice things, make sure their headsets and microphones were working properly. And she said, well, she was on the stage practicing, the people that she was getting ready to compete against were actually running around the room trying to find spots that maybe were, you know, dead air or if there was issues with sound, just to make sure she could be clearly seen and heard from every position. And they were also making recommendations about perhaps some of the gestures and how she could enhance them on that larger stage. Now, of course, that's an example, you know, very high up in the organization competing at a very high level. But I believe every club offers that on a smaller scale. Everyone is there looking out for you and your success. And that's the great thing about Toastmasters. We're not competing with each other, even if it is a contest. We're there to re raise each other up and make each other better. So just something to think about thinking about that club mission and how we're providing that supportive and positive learning experience. Absolutely something that we should all be proud of as Toastmasters new and long term. When you first go to a meeting though, you may notice that it's a little weird. There's clapping, there's all these different roles, and you're not necessarily clear on what the difference is with those roles. So I just wanted to quickly go over some of the more common roles that you may see in a Toastmasters meeting. First of all, of course, we have the timer. And the timer, you'll notice sometimes, will do interesting things, like they'll change the colors in their background. Uh, for example, they'll have the, the green, yellow, and red background in order to show you that the time is up. Or of course, if you're meeting in person, they'll use lights to indicate the timing. Or perhaps timing cards. Timing cards is another option if a club does not have a set of lights. This is to make sure the meeting starts and ends on time because of course, all professional meetings, we want to run as close to on time as possible. They'll also give you feedback on how long you've taken in your first table topic speech or perhaps your first prepared speech. And it helps you to manage your time in any presentation you need to deliver going forward, whether you've got five to seven minutes, 20 minutes, or an hour. The next role is table topics master. This person is the facilitator of the table topics portion of your meeting, and the table topics are impromptu speeches. These last for one to two minutes, and the goal is to get up there with very little notice, if any, of what your topic will be, and you do a full two-minute speech with an opening body and conclusion. So the Table Topics Master's role is, of course, to first of all, make everybody aware what their role is at, at the start. And then they, of course, pose all the questions to the attendees. Sometimes they get guests involved as well. So you may have had that experience prior to joining. But it is really a, a great role if you're starting out to even take that challenge on of leading the Table Topics portion of the meeting. Grammarian and Accounter. 
These two roles are sometimes combined into one grammarian, which is why I've put them in the same line. But the grammarian and ah counter roles are essentially helping monitor our use of the English language. Especially when we're new to Toastmasters, we commonly will use filler words, and that's what the ah counter's role really is. They're listening for those ah, um, etc. in order to count them and give you an idea how often you're using it because of course the theory is if you're reminded how often you're using it you'll do everything you can to delete that from your vocabulary when speaking and instead of taking these audible pauses you'll actually take a breath relax and then continue on after you've gained your thoughts the grammarian, on the other hand, usually presents a word of the day and gives uh, gives uh, kind of a, it makes it a little game sometimes. Some clubs actually tap on the tables uh, when they hear the word of the day just to make it kind of fun. And the idea there, of course, is to expand our vocabulary, challenge us to incorporate new words into our speech. And they're also listening for improper use of the English language. And sometimes they'll point out really good use of the English language as well, where they're hearing some very colorful language that we often don't incorporate into our speeches. So th those two roles are more or less helping us with our, our English usage overall. Of course, there's a prepared speaker, or maybe multiple. Some clubs have one, two, three in each meeting. And they'll present a project from the Pathways Learning Experience, which uh, can vary from an icebreaker speech right up to an advanced speech where they've done a lot of preparation and maybe had to do some research for some time prior to presenting. Your Toastmaster, which is essentially your MC for the meeting. Your speech evaluator, who will provide feedback. Usually that's about two to three minutes and they'll provide feedback to the person that's presented a prepared speech. And finally, your general evaluator who evaluates everyone that hasn't been evaluated and the overall meeting. All of these roles are really important. And as a new member, you may be called on to take some of the roles. I encourage you, try it out. There's certainly no harm in putting your hand in and giving, for example, Table Topics Master a shot. Remember what we just talked about. Toastmasters is a supportive environment, and therefore you don't need to worry about falling on your face. If you make some mistakes, not a big deal. That's how we grow. Take on a challenge whenever you can. The other thing you may hear of sometimes in the club experience is distinguished club program. And I don't want to get too deep into it because this is something that club officers typically focus on. But, but the goal is, of course, to have a quality club. That's how we execute our club mission. We have good club meetings, strong meetings each week, and we'll have a very successful club. So the measurement of that, of course, is a few things. And that's where the Distinguished Club program is entered, or really the Healthy Club program is another way to call it. Clubs that achieve education awards, which are listed on the screen right now, count for six out of 10 goals that you can achieve. You've got membership for recruiting new members because of course, uh, some people come for a very specific reason. Perhaps they're preparing for a friend or family member's wedding and they need to present a speech and they're coming to Toastmasters just for that purpose and then they move on. Others move away or other things get in the way of their Toastmasters time. And for that reason, we always need to be recruiting new members and replacing those that leave us. And that keeps, of course, a healthy membership that keeps the energy high and helps to keep that quality meeting experience. And then the last two goals, uh, again, 10 goals, are related to administrative. Number one, of course, is getting your officers trained. If four out of the seven officers attend training twice a year, they will uh, achieve that goal and then paying your dues on time and submitting your club officer list. So all together, again, there's those 10 goals that you can achieve. If you get five of them, you can become a distinguished club, seven select distinguished and nine for presidents distinguished. The only qualifying requirement that this has in order to qualify for this program is you need to have 20 members in your club, that's 20 paid members, or a net growth of five from the prior 
July 1st. As long as you achieve that, you qualify for this, and then it's just a matter of getting five, seven, or nine goals. I hope this has been informative and helpful for you. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.